Hi everybody, this is Katie. Welcome to Chapter 2, Input Processing and Output. I want to take a few minutes to go through the main concepts of this chapter before we get into another video where we'll code together. So the main things here is we're going to learn how to design a program. We're going to do input um, with variables. We're going to do some sort of calculations and some sort of output. So the chapter is called Input, Processing, and Output, and uh, those are the main steps we're going to follow when we design any program. So as we go on, different things will happen with processing, but it'll still be the same type of, of main high-level concept. We're going to talk about variables, calculations, uh, data types, and then some of these things at the end, um, constants, hand tracing your program, you'll do in the next video and read about them on your own. So I just want to take a few minutes and talk about the main points. So first of all, designing a program, uh, what we do is we are given a problem. So say our problem is to calculate your net pay. So we need to figure out how we're going to do that. So we can use two tools to do that. One is called pseudocode and one is called flowcharts. Pseudocode is uh, something that you write down on paper. So let's say that I want to, let's see, I could do pseudocode in Notepad. I could say, let's say that I want to write this program. Let me make my font big. Let's say that we want to um, write a program that will say display, enter um, employee name. So we might do something like that. And then we want to take that into a variable, employee name. And then maybe we want to say we want to enter hours worked. Because if you're trying to calculate the gross pay, we need to know how many hours they worked, so we'll say input hours worked. And we also need to know what's their rate of pay. So we'll ask that question. Now you don't have to type along or do anything in this video, you're just watching this as you're reading through the chapter to help you go through. This is our, our mini lecture, I'm going to call them, because uh, if we do long lectures on videos, you'll lose focus. So we don't want to do that. Uh, so we want to input rate pay. And then we want to calculate gross pay as hours worked times rate pay or rate of pay. And then we want to display the gross pay. So that's how you would write something in pseudocode to solve this problem. Now, my pseudocode is a little different than what is in the book. On page 30, you'll see the same problem um, where they have written, they've designed this problem using pseudocode. It's just fake code. It's something you write in English. And there's no right keywords, there's no wrong keywords, it's just you explaining in your language, your native language, English or Spanish or whatever you're coding in, uh, or whatever your, your primary language is. I always say Spanish because if you, if you speak Spanish and you want to write this in Spanish, go ahead. Although I can't, I can't read Spanish, so it might be hard for me to grade, but anyway, we write it in our, our native language and we uh, explain the steps that are going on without being code specific. So anyone can take this problem and put it in a real programming language like Java or C++ or C Sharp or uh, Visual S um, or, or Small Basic, which is what we're doing. Now I'm glad I don't have my video um, on right now. So, but if you could see my face, my arms are waving all over the place because I like coding so much. So I'm going to save this because we're going to come back to it later. I have re remember um, a folder CIS116 problem. So let's. I'm just going to call this my pseudocode. P S E U D O, not pseudo code. People call it pseudo pseudo code. I can't even say it. It's pseudocode. Uh, for pseudocode for uh, gross pay. You don't need to save it. I'm going to just come back to it later, so I want to leave that open. So that is designing the program. Now, and an example of how you can do that in a pseudocode. 
So let me show you an example of how you could do it with a flowchart. Now there's a lot of tools you can use. Go over here. There's a lot of tools you can use for flowcharts. You, you can use Visio. You can use Word even has flowcharts. You can use a pencil and a paper. And all a flowchart is is a graphical representation of what your program does. So if you look at page 31, well, I always reference the page because I don't usually look at the PowerPoints, but uh, here on this slide, um, this is a flowchart. So you have different symbols you use. You have a start and a stop, and you have input, and then you have um, inputs and outputs are parallelograms, and then um, rectangles are your processes. So if you wanted to take your flowchart, I'm sorry, your pseudocode, and convert it to a flowchart, you could do that using Visio or Word or a pencil or paper and draw it out. Um, even Excel has flowcharts, but one of the tools that I like to use, I've used for years, is called Raptor. It's a free tool that um, it runs on Windows. It might, it probably even runs on, let's see. Now, I think it only runs on Windows. Now, I'm not going to require it for, uh, maybe it does run on Macs, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to require it for class, but sometimes I'll write I'll, I'll throw out flowcharts that were designed using Raptor, so you'll see them, or I'll reference them, or use them in some of the lecture videos. Um, oh yeah, we've, they've experimented with Ubuntu. Well, if you're using Macs, you can try it out. Go ahead, if you want to. Um, Raptor's completely free, and um, like I said, I've used it for free. I, I, or, or I've used it for years. But what it is, is this uh, awesome tool that allows us to design our program using a flowchart, and then we can run it to see if it's going to work. So if I want to do that same program, I'm going to do an input. So I drag my input statement here, and I say, I double click, and this box comes up, and I say, uh, it'll say enter the prompt. So you'll, you'll say, um, what did we say? Enter employee name. And I'm going to put that into the variable here called employee name. And then done. Now let me run it to see if my syntax, the syntax, Raptor has a little syntax, and I can't remember if we need to use pop. No, we don't. Let me go back to that. Okay, I did that right. Uh, so we did our first one. Sorry, I'll go back to explaining that. I just wanted to test it. And then we asked our next input, um, enter rate. Oh, I have to put it around quotes, though. Enter rate of, let's see, we asked, we asked uh, enter hours, enter number of hours worked. Something like that. We'll put that into hours worked. Uh, we had another input <coughs> where we said enter uh, rate of pay. Yeah, I'll put that into pay rate. And then we add our calculation. That's an assignment box. And our our assignment box is like what are we trying to calculate we're trying to calculate gross pay as hours worked times rate oh it's not rate pay I knew I was going to do that it's pay rate and you have to use the correct spelling so sometimes I just use those down there to double click and then we had remember in our pseudocode so we did this we did that we did this and we want to and we did our calculations and now we want to display our gross pay so if I go back to Raptor and I want to do an output now not an input and I can say gross pay for plus I'm going to concatenate and I'm going to put in here my employee name variable Oh, I guess I can't just, oh, let's see if I can, I can copy and paste that. Plus, I'm going to add on, so I'm going to say, uh, is, like a sentence, and then a dollar sign, and then end my quotation marks, add another, and then 
display gross pay. <laughs> I keep money to do that. Gross pay. And then I'll hit done. Save your work. Okay, that's a really good idea. So I'm going to go back to my 16 file and uh, flow chart for gross pay program. Ding. Okay, now why I like Raptor is because now we have a, our flow chart just like you do on page 31 and just like you do in the presentation here like this but it does it's just a little different because of the way that the program works now one of the reasons I like Raptor is you can hit this execute button at the top and watch it runs through what your program's supposed to do when there's an input it stops so I'm going to put in here um, enter employees name let's enter um, Donald Trump for some reason that's coming to my mind right now and I don't know why and like he would ever get paid by the hour uh, so we'll enter that he just walks around and breathes and money falls from the sky to him. so let's say he's worked 25.8 hours okay so over here we can see employee name stores a value and then uh, hours worked uh, he worked 28 25.8 hours we're not rounding up for him and he gets twelve dollars and fifty cents an hour so BAM and our program does this in the background it calculates gross pay as 322 times fifth or three hundred twenty two dollars and fifty cents and then our output is over here gross pay for Donald Trump is 322.50 so that's a flowchart now one of the things in the back of the chapter is called walking through hand, uh, what was it called, hand checking or hand calculations. And this is where you just go through and make sure that your program is doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I am going to take out my calculator real quick, hand tracing, uh, page 64 hand tracing a program to see if it does what it's supposed to do. Now this one walks through so I'm going to go and pull up my calculator. Calculator, calculator. And I'm just going to make sure I need one, that if I worked, you guys have all had jobs before hopefully, if you've worked 25.80 hours and you make $12.50 an hour, whoops, you're going to want to know what your paycheck is going to be minus taxes. You want to check these things because employers make mistakes. So your gross pay minus without taxes should be $322.50 and that's exactly how my program calculated it. So I coded that right. So back to here. We have, let me go back one slide, or a couple slides again. Designing a program. We have two tools to help us. We could either do pseudocode or we could do flowcharts. One is English or words that displays what our program does and one is a flowchart that shows what our program does. Sometimes if you're a visual learner it's easier to see the symbols and the flow of the program and then for other people, it just makes sense to write out the steps. So that's completely up to you as a programmer which one you want to do when you are designing a program. Um, flowchart connector symbols, these are just different flowcharting symbols that you can read about on page 32 and 33. Raptor, it just continues making them. Okay, the big um, idea of this chapter, input, processing, and output. So our computer typically follows three steps. Some sort of input is received. So if you look at our pseudocode or our, our flowchart, let's go to our pseudocode, this is input, this is input, and this is input. Because I need these three pieces of data in order for my program to work. 
And then some processes perform performed, that would be this. This is my calculation. And then we produce some sort of output, and that would be this. So we have three steps that are tip that typically happen when we do when we do our program. So there's just another a way to show what I've just explained. Uh, input processing output chart, this is a tool that helps you break down what's input, what's process, and what's output. And when I assign problems and we do our first program, I'll write an IPO chart for you so you can help figure that out. Now a lot of times in the beginning, um, some of our, a lot of times in the beginning of coding, the hardest, pro the hardest part is to determine how you're going to solve a problem. So that's what I'm here to help you do at the beginning is figure out what our input is supposed to be, what our output is supposed to be, and what we're trying to, to calculate in between there. So we will do that with our programs. Now in the beginning, they're small, so it should seem easy. But as soon as we go on with uh, more complex programs and directions like modules and next chapter and decisions, they get uh, going off in many different tangents and it's important to keep track of what is our input and what are we trying to calculate and what are we doing to output. So IPO charts come in handy. Um, display, some of the terms that you need to know from this section. Um, String literals, these are the things you put in quotes. So display is a keyword. When you say display, it's not going to be print to the screen. What's going to be print to the screen is whatever's in quotation marks. So that's called a string literal. And I use that term all the time. You need to know when I say string literal, it's a sentence or series of letters. So here, enter employee name. That's a string literal. Uh, Raptor doesn't use the display keyword. You know, you would use that in pseudocode. But that's what a string literal is. Um, sequence is important. Sequence is that um, the way that you display your information, it, it, everything in programming goes from the top to the bottom. So if you were to say um, pay is and then a dollar sign quote plus to concatenate it. If you were to display gross pay and then display um, employee is plus employee name, if you were to put it in this order, it would say pay is 322.50, employee is Donald Trump. But if you wanted to put the name first, then you would have to put that line of code before. So everything is sequentially processed in order from the top to the bottom. So make sure you remember that. Uh, input is a key word that reads in data. And when we are coding in our um, small basic, the keyword is is read. When you're displaying things to the screen, the text or the, the um, keyword in small basic is write. So we'll practice those when we do our next video when we, you'll code along with me. Um, variables, these are, we'll talk more in depth about them, but I, I'm trying to keep this mini lecture mini. And um, variables are parts of our program that we need to store data for. So we have things like employee name is a variable. Um, you might even, as part of your pseudocode, say uh, my variables are, you know, and what they are going to be. So string employee, we'll come back to that, string employee name, and then one that is um, float hours worked and float rate pay and float gross pay, and then I'll end that comment. But these would be the variables that I would use in my program. Um, the rules are here. No spaces in any language. Generally, no punctuation or special characters. The first character can't be a number. And then the last one is it should represent what it's stored. So I don't want to just say hours. I want to say what? Hours worked, hours absent, hours what? Um, be specific. And then camel casing. 
I use camel casing all the time. This is where you say, since we can't have spaces in our variable names, we put it all together and then the second word, the first letter is capital. So that's called camel casing. Um, variable assignments. We'll do more of this when we do our sample code because, again, mini lecture going on here. But um, variables are given a value that either you can set or you can calculate. So in our program that we wrote our little pseudocode in our flowchart, we calculated those values or we took them in as input. We didn't set them at the beginning, but you could have. So if if um, you didn't want to ask for our, I'm sorry, if you didn't want to ask for the rate of pay and every place, everybody at your company got um, $20 an hour, you could not do the input and set the rate of pay as $20. So there's different ways to set values to variables. Uh, if you're not inputting it or you're not calculating it, it needs to be set so it has some sort of value. Uh, make sure you read about that. Uh, calculations, again, we're going to code some things together but, and we'll use these different calculations. The table is on page 46. We have in, we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and remember the order of operations does take precedence there. Briefly, um, variable declarations and data types. Data types we'll use are integers, reals, and strings. And um, real is, this, I guess I should call this uh, uh, real, but real and floats are the same. Real is a decimal, float is a decimal. Uh, string is a word, and int is an integer. So if you wanted to store employee's age, you could say int employee age. And we'd make it an integer because you're not putting in like uh, 20.5. You're saying 20. So it'd be a whole number. Anything that has to do with money is always a, a real um, or a float variable. It stores decimals. So either an integer for whole number, real for a decimal, or string for a series of characters. I always initialize my variables to zero. You'll see that as we code along, and you can read about that in the book. Um, constants, read about constants. These are um, values that never change. Hand tracing a program I've talked about, and documentation. Um, we'll document in our program, but I use documentation all the time. Like here's documenting this out. This means it's not code, that's process. It's just explaining to the programmer or to somebody reading the, the pseudocode or the program what the program's doing without actual lines of code. So that is our a first quick glimpse, glimpse at Chapter 2. We'll be doing a couple codes together in our next video that you're going to watch coming up next, and you'll be turning some assignments in. So uh, thanks for listening. Um, you can go through this uh, program here if you want on uh, calculating a batting average, but we'll do something fun together in our next video. So, mini lecture complete. <laughs>